So hey guys, welcome to uh, you know another comic book review and today I will actually be reviewing of course Batman Robin issue number 8 for you guys first. But before I get into the review, I'm just going to tell you the comic books that I picked up was actually, you know, Batgirl issue number 8, Superboy issue number 8, Green Lantern issue number 8, and also Batman Arkham City Unhinged issue number 1, which is exclusively was supposed to be a digital comic, but now they're, you know, releasing it on printed copies. So now we get printed issues, so, which is exciting for me because I never read the digital series, so now I get to, you know, collect it as a printed copy. But yeah. Let's get into, you know, the review of Batman Robin issue number 8. But before, you know, I get into the review, let me just show you the cover right here. Just a little close-up of the cover. You can see here. Now, if you really look closely at this, you know, cover, what kind of symbol or what kind of message is it sending it towards you, you know? Like, I think it has a lot of meaning towards, you know, this cover. It looks like nothing much is happening. It's just, you know, um, Batman cradling um, Damien in his arms, you know, trying to, you know, es escape from the, you know exploded or sinking ship they are on but when you really use your imagination can you imagine you know batman without his cowl and just as bruce wayne and damien as a small child you know and you know bruce is cradling um damien in his arms as a baby and that's kind of like a father and son symbolic kind of thing right here and and uh, just don't take my word for it. I mean, I just it's just my imagination. You can interpret it, you know, in your whole own, you know, different idea or way you want it to. But I find that this cover actually has a lot of symbol in it. And it does have a lot of, you know, to do with what's going to come up in this issue. Now, let's give you some, you know, just a brief, you know, story of what happened in the last issue. So in the last issue of Batman and Robin, um, you know, we saw the epic and final conclusion to the battle against Nobody. And Bruce and Nobody had a big gigantic fight and you know in the end he lost his life because Damien killed him. And that's a spoiler that I didn't want to tell people. But now is a question that still hasn't been answered yet. How is Bruce and Damien's relationship gonna affect you know what happened in the end of um, issue number seven? Will they get closer? Would they be separated? What's gonna happen after that happened? Or to be more specific, how is their relationship right now? We saw that sort of their relationship did develop to a, you know, a turn point and, you know, sort of like a conclusion, you know, to all that in, you know, the last couple of issues. But um, is there more to be seen in issue number eight? And I'm going to answer that question for you. So we open up with, you know, what happened in the end of issue number seven. We saw, you know, Ducard get hit by his own attack by Damien, you know, right in the forehead, dead set her in the forehead and... Of course he's dead. He's not alive. He's not paralyzed. So if anybody's thinking that, you know, Damien didn't kill him, he just paralyzed him. No, he's he's dead. He's, he has no life in him anymore. And of course, you know, um, what happens now is Damien says, I had to do it for you, father, because, you know, I love you. You know, I have to do this for you, you know, to protect you. This is what I have to do. And I'm sorry for doing what I had to do. I'm sorry for lying to you. And he's trying to apologize to Bruce. But of course, Bruce is like, you know, Enough of that, you know, we, we shouldn't be dealing with this right now. We don't need to talk about this right now. Right now, what we need to do is get out of here. So, of course, you know, um, Bruce, you know, carries Damien um, out of um, the wrecked ship and they escape. And then you see like a small little panel of, you know, Ducard's face, you know, slowly sinking down into the ocean, into the depths of the ocean. Now he's, you know, dead. You know, the ocean is his grave. Um... And yeah, so after that, Bruce takes Damien back home and Alfred, you know, gets to work right away to patch him up. And one really, I, I don't know if this is really the costume they were trying to use, but um, of course, you know, Alfred sees, you know, Bruce is pretty battered up and he needs some, you know, medical attention. But of course he says, no, you need to work on Damien first. Don't worry about me. I'm okay. Work on Damien. And... They did a close-up shot of his face, and in the background, you actually saw a Robin costume, an old Robin costume. Now, this is from what I'm, you know, my personal opinion and my idea is that it's sort of symbolic in a way he's telling Alfred, take care of Damien. I don't want another Robin to die, just like Jason Todd. In the background, you see a Robin costume with a red domino mask. So my first impression was like, okay, that must be, you know, um... 
Jason Todd's old Robin costume, and Bruce is worrying about, you know, Damien losing his life. So he's telling, you know, Alfred, work on Damien first. Don't, I don't want him to die. He's my son. He's a Robin. He should not die because of me. And, you know, of course, Alfred tells Bruce that it's okay. He has a minor concussion. He has some minor bruises, some minor cuts, but he's not severely injured. His organs are fine. He's not going to lose his life. He just needs some rest. And Bruce is relieved, you know, at this um, information. And he goes upstairs and he looks at a picture of his parents and he tells him, you know, I wish it was me who killed, you know, Ducard or Morgan. I wish it was me who had that blood stained on my hand, not Damien. I wish it was me, not him. And he collapses unconscious and Alfred comes to his aid and starts patching him up. Afterwards, um, you know, Bruce tucks in uh, Damien, you know, to bed and he leaves a little USB for him. And Damien has, you know, an MP3 or an iPod, whatever you want to call it. And he sticks a USB in and he listens to some recordings. And the recordings were actually talking about how Bruce actually wanted to kill Morgan for what he had done. And he was pretty upset. He wanted to kill him. And he monologued this all in, you know, uh, you know, a recorder. And he gave it to Damien. And Damien comes up to Bruce and he says, you know, I listened to all of this. And, you know, he's asking Bruce, what are you doing? And he's still trying to lighten up the whole mansion. He's giving up his sort of dark past and getting over it. So he's trying to clean up his father's... Um, office area and then now I don't want to spoil anything about you know Bruce and Damien's talk that they're gonna have right now so I have to say if you really want to know what's going to happen I have to tell you that it's a really good talk I really love you know how their dialogue or how they traded dialogue dialogues with one another how they're talking with one another and how they're dealing with the whole entire situation that just happened so if you guys don't want me to spoil this pick up the issue I highly recommend you picking it up but for those who want to know how the conversation went with between these two. Was it awkward? Was it what what happened? I'm gonna tell you. So spoiler alert here. If you guys don't want to watch it, skip this video and go pick up the issue. That's my recommendation right there. But um, now I'm gonna give you my insights on what's going to happen. Now Damien mentions to Bruce, you know, I read you know, I heard your whole entire recording. What was all of this? And Bruce was saying that, you know, I wanted to give you these recordings to tell you that you're just like me. You're no different, okay? You are you are like father and son. I, you know, gave you those recordings to tell you that I did have intentions of killing Morgan at one, you know, one point in my life. That I did think about killing villains, about these lunatics, that I would have crossed those lines. And I am just like you. You know, you're no different. You just need to set boundaries for yourself, you know? And like... You know, I wanted to kill someone just like you wanted to kill someone. So there's just, you know, so Bruce is just stating that he and, you know, he and Damien are just the same. Not that he's trying to reject Damien as a son, but he's accepting him as his own. You know, and we actually get to see him do that, and that's really good. But what goes on to make this conversation a bit better is that, you know, Damien gives his insight about how he feels about what he's doing. You know, how he's a ruthless killer before. Like, he didn't really care about how, you know about villains lie, you know, he would kill them without, you know, a second thought. And Damon tells him that, you know, I'm scared of turning out to be like nobody. I don't want to be a nobody. I want to be like you, Dad. I want to be a somebody. I want to be a hero. I don't want to have no moral compass like, you know, nobody. I want to have that. But at the same time, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I am. You know, I'm scared of what I will turn into if I keep doing this. And Bruce gently puts his arms, you know, on Damien's shoulders and tells him, you are my son, and that's all there is to it. There's nothing else to be questioned here. You are my son. You are definitely my son. And don't question that, you know? And you will get through this. You just need to set boundaries for yourself. There's times, like he said, there's times when I wanted to actually kill these lunatics. They were running around the streets, and I'm just apprehending them, putting them back in Arkham. Don't think I have never thought twice about actually taking their lives, ending this whole cycle of madness, you know? But, you know, he says, I have to live. You know, I made this promise to my parents that I would not kill, you know? And that's a great way that, you know, to tell Damien, to teach Damien, you know? It's like he's not being harsh or anything. He's just telling Damien, you know, I was like that. And you just need to learn from your mistakes. And in the end, he tells him, you know, you can't, 
you know, apologize for your mistake. That's one thing you can't do. You can't take away what you've done already. Okay, now you're gonna have to live with that, you know, con you know, that guilty conscience that you killed someone. Let that be a lesson to you. That's all I'm going to tell you. You're gonna have to live with that, and that can actually be your line, your boundary. You know, and in the end, they have a fun, you know, father and son day because they're incapacitated. They need to rest, so they just decide to have fun, you know, with each other, spend some time with each other, and. It's a great way to end this issue, and I love this. It was a really fantastic issue. Uh, I covered, you know, a lot of this, you know, trying to speculate and everything. And like I said, this issue was great. Seeing Bruce actually finally express his feelings towards Damien, you know. Like in the last couple of issues, we did see him express his, you know, general feelings toward Damien. But not enough, strong enough feelings that, you know, you would say... You know, he's finally a father figure. And now I'm proud to say that Bruce has reached his final point of being a father figure. He has grown as a, you know, character himself from a, you know, heartless, not heartless, but, you know, non-emotional person. You know, he excludes his emotions to anybody. He does not show his feelings towards nobody whatsoever. You know, he always hides it. You never know what he's thinking. But to see him express that towards Damien, to accept him, to show him caring and love can actually change Damien as a character now, and that's very awesome, and I really love this issue. It was fantastic. I highly suggest you guys pick this issue up. You guys don't even know what's going on. Pick this issue up, you know, just to see Damien and Bruce interact with each other, finally as a father and son together. It's fantastic. I highly suggest you keep picking this issue up. Can't wait to see what's going to happen next. And now, I could say, goodbye. That's my review of Batman and Robin issue number eight. And yeah, talk to you guys later.